Family that takes yeah. my lunch money after school every oh, day yeah. is here, yes. and I can't do anything about yes. this. I'm helpless, you know. Yes. And I couldn't do this mm -hmm. in that moment. I I was I couldn't I couldn't cure it. Mm -hmm. And I and I was, but fortunately, it it didn't come. See, the herpes, the actual herpes, didn't come for about a day till the after the feeling started. You know, I, I had a very, you know, kind of long time. Th my outbreaks were like every three months or something. That was me too. Yeah. And so I had some time, maybe hours it would take for the thing to come. And I, uh, you know, in a few minutes, I passed over my dread. Yeah. And I took the herpes out. Wow. Yeah, I took out the herpes. And the feeling went away. Mm -hmm. And it kept coming back, like for like about a week. And every time it came back, I whacked it. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and I never got the outbreak. Yeah, I never had the outbreak. And then it stopped coming back. And I kept finding herpes. I'm, you haven't learned how to do this. So you actually haven't learned how to cure your herpes yet. No. But anyway, I I kept just kept taking it out, and at some point, it didn't come back. You know, if you keep shooting them when they come down the hill, at some point, no yeah. more of them come down the hill. <laughs> How long has it been since you've had an outbreak then? How long has it been since you cured it? I cured, cured it, it in 1993. Oh, yeah. I love that. Because I get the big... Uh-huh. I had that. Stress. I had the, I had the lip in general. I had both. Yeah. <laughs> Great. Let me see if there's anything else I have to tell you. Oh, yes. Oh, report your cures in the poll. Report my well, you tested that you cured some something or some things right. after you leave here. When you go to the homepage, you join the Cure Drive, and then there's on the homepage it says Report Cure. Okay. Click on that, and it goes to the page, and then you go to the form, and you click the little boxes. And that right. will, and you test how many cures you had. Remember like you were testing how many trauma you had? Right. Well, you test how many cures you had. Yeah. So, and then you report, you know, whatever it is. And then maybe you'll have more by the time you get home. You, yeah. know? you, can, do, you can cure things in your car. Mm -hmm. I once cured a kidney problem in my car in 10 minutes on the way from the park to my house. And this was in Philadelphia in mm -hmm. 1994. And I haven't had a kidney problem since then, I will say. But it was, an, it was a you know, suddenly occurring kidney problem. Mm -hmm. um, next time... We do this. I'm going to guarantee you that you are going to discover things you never knew you had wrong with you. Okay. <laughs> That'll be I don't it. Know how good that sounds. That's be, yeah, really. Yeah. <laughs> we will. It's like taking your car to the mechanic. Right. Right. Exactly. <laughs> yep. You're going to need a. <laughs> that's it for this one. Wave goodbye, Gracie. Bye. <laughs> Well, same lecture, different day. <laughs> it is the next installment in this saga. And it is, you know, I told you this was the turning point of my life, so you might as well... Uh, tell you why and it's really this is the transformation it's what it looks like to becoming somebody who cures something okay it's the summer of that year 96 and bill went to a huge like a convention for gay men you know what it was like it was sort of probably i mean he told me a little about it but it was sort of like a, probably like a whole life expo. You know what those are like where you have all these workshops going simultaneously and, you know, you have to pick the one you want. And there was like about 2,000 uh, men there. So you see the question we're asking here, okay, you want to look back on this experience that I'm telling you about where I helped Bill cure his hepatitis. When he called me, I freaked. I mean, I was scared to death, you know, because, I mean, I was going like, this better work, you know. <laughs> He's going to die. I mean, this is, it turns into liver cancer. I could imagine, you know, visiting Bill, you know, when he was, you know, dying. What was that going to be like? <laughs> I, 
I had watched somebody die of cancer before I learned how to cure things. You know, I didn't know you could cure cancer when she died, Jackie. Jackie was a friend of Bill's, too. Jackie was the doctor who ran the cancer support groups at Pennsylvania Hospital. And she'd had a mastectomy when I met her. She was the only woman I ever was lovers with who died. That was a rite of passage. Whoa, I didn't want to go through that with Bill. You know, I was, whoa, whoa okay, you know. <laughs> oh, boy. <clears throat> and so, of course, the reason why I was so scared, I mean, what was I to be scared about, you know? I cured my herpes, and herpes is a virus, and hepatitis B is a virus. So what was the problem? What was the big problem, you know? The big problem was... I didn't know you could cure things with any degree of certainty. I wasn't somebody who cures things. I was somebody who doesn't cure things, who had cured a couple of things. That's why. You know, that, was the, that was the big problem. You know? <laughs> that were, that, there you got it right there, you know. <laughs> oh, man, I was picturing myself at Bill's funeral when he called me. Not a pretty picture. Okay, so anyway, so Bill, Bill went to this convention for gay men. And they had this point where mostly it was these small workshops and people would pick their workshops. But they had this point where everybody could get together. And I guess everybody probably didn't get together at that point. But there were, maybe there were around 1,500 guys, you know, in the room or in the auditorium or whatever it was. And the leader, the facilitator, uh, invited them to stand up and say if, if they wanted to say anything. And Bill stood up and he said, I cured hepatitis B. <laughs> and he said, I believe it's possible to, to kill HIV. We can, we can also cure HIV. And the facilitator said, <laughs> Bill, <laughs> he said, you shouldn't be in this. You should be leading this. <laughs> he said, why, why aren't you giving a workshop? You know, <laughs> you know he, he said, play at your level. And see, that is one of Bill's main problems. has always been that he doesn't play at his level in life. You know, he doesn't. He doesn't do what he can. But you know, I will say, you have to give Bill some credit. Because Bill has stood up, like he stood up at this gathering, you know? And, like for another example, like Bill once cut off all federal funding to the city of Philadelphia because of their discriminatory hiring practices. <laughs> Bill was one of six people in charge of civil rights in this country for years. He was the director of HUD for the Northeast region. And he, uh, you know, he wore an ear, he had his ear pierced in the, you know, early in the 80s, you know, in the Reagan administration, he wore an earring to work. <laughs> and they looked at him, you know, I guess they, he, he said to me, he once said to me, like, they, they looked at me and they said, well, this guy is outing himself in here now, this is the wrong time to do this, you know, maybe we should put him in charge of civil rights. <laughs> And that's what they did, you know, they put him in charge of civil rights, and he really did stand up for civil rights. You know, Bill was a fighter. I mean, you have to give Bill a lot of credit, you know. I was proud of him a lot of times when he was doing my courses, and he was really an exemplary, he was an example of what I taught my students, you know, to conduct.